So something that I learned with my mom that uh, the word has a lot of power. The word, everything that you say has a lot of power. So, and I always advise my students, I always give them some advice, then you have to surround yourself with good people, with good energy, because our mouth has a lot of power. In 1988, this kid born. As soon as he's born, his daddy came and said, today, the world gonna know about the new champ. Today, born the new martial artist champ. Today, born, Giga Shikatsi. <laughs> this is what your dad said, and I believe Pala, words has a lot of power. It's a pleasure to talk in for uh, OG Talk. First time podcast for me. Yeah, First time, Giga. Really cool, yeah. I like the lights, everything. <laughs> you born for that, <laughs> as your dad you know, <laughs> said. <laughs> and uh, especially in my experience and in my life experience, like the world, Hundred percent has a huge power because the, the word he put in my mind <laughs> from the day one is still in my head and um, following that way, you know, whatever you say, whatever I say, whatever they said, I'm trying to prove it and follow it. So it's word has a big power. And I believe that from your culture that uh, a lot of great fighters come from Georgia. To be honest with you, um, when you talk about fights, mm -hmm. the first thing in my mind, you are a young OG, <laughs> which means you start <laughs> super it. young, you start super young, start martial arts, and uh, everything that you have in your life came from your sweat. So you sweat, you put blood, you put desire in everything that you have done. And uh, I like to say, as soon as you came here, King's MMA, seven years ago, you brought something, then uh, I always look for in the fighter. You brought fighting eyes. And, uh, we're just the beginning of the, our journey. We have a lot of things coming up, but uh, you have a lot of experience in your back. Let people know about who is Giga? Who is Giga Shikat? <laughs> yeah, I remember this day till day, like yesterday, the, when I came here first time. Yeah, you know, there was much less flex <laughs> out here, yeah. And uh, I loved the gym, I loved the atmosphere, and I started to look around right away, the weather would be my flex spot, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, since the day one, uh, I entered here, I knew that that was my place, I was gonna continue my career and uh, I don't know, it's some kind of kind of like a right connection when it happens. You just can't explain by words, you know, it's, it's a feelings and the senses and this is what I got. And uh, once you opened uh, the door for me and, and the same day I met Penny here and this like little triangle, it worked so well right away that I was like, damn, I'm moving from Amsterdam, moving my family here. Uh, how long you spend in Amsterdam? You spend a long, long a lot uh, of time. In there. Amsterdam, I spent the seven years. Man. Seven years. Yeah, two first two years pretty uh, busy. W I was with uh, living in Breda. Mm -hmm. Breda is a city in Netherlands where I spent um, all my trainings, uh, first trainings of the Dutch kickboxing when I learned. Uh, what, what gym? It's a gym called Golden Glo Glory. Golden Glory. Golden yeah. Glory. And uh, the main coach was Cor Hermers and uh, Ramon Deckers. So the Cor diamond. Hermes, yeah, the diamond. Yeah, he had the Golden Glory. Coach was Cor Hermes and the same gym, uh, evening classes, was uh, run by the Team Deckers, Team Diamond. And Ramon Deckers was the coach of them and the Golden Glory was run by the Cor Hermers, which was uh, his uh, step 
stepfather, Ramon Duque's stepfather oh. was Core Hammers. And started from there, yeah. I mean, I had a long time before I spent in karate, but... Start with four? Four years. Four, four, four years, years oh my when Lord. my dad put me on the mats. And I remember how him and uh, his friend, who was a coach... Kyokushin? They would, they would Kyokushin? Uh, no, it was Kujuryu? Uh, started with Kyokushin. Kyokushin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the first two years I was with his friend, who was pretty much like giving me a little private lessons and they would split me <laughs> like a Van Damme. <laughs> I would cry, sweat from eyes, from nose, yeah. but yeah, you know, they were, no, you gotta do it. And I was doing it. And then I joined the team, Yokushin, but uh, when I was six, I joined uh, the class actually with the kids and they were, you don't believe master how many people this guy had, they were, 3,000 students he had, 3,000 students. This guy was um, from uh, the war. We, we had the war before, a few years earlier, and we lost our territory called Af Abkhazia, mm -hmm. Abkhazeti. Mm -hmm. We call Abkhazeti. In English, we, they say Abkhazia. And this is in Russian territory right now. And one of the most beautiful parts of Georgia, like amazing, beautiful seaside with a nice mountain. Reminds me actually of the Rio pictures when mm -hmm. I see that, you know, mm -hmm. there was Rio and stuff. And uh, this guy was from here and he was karate fighter who was my coach for three, four years. Uh, he went in Japan, that's where he, uh, he learned uh, with, with Oyama, Oyama. Matsutatsu Oyama. Yeah. Uh, the the guy who founded Kyokushin Karate, and um, the o Oyama Island, the Oyama Island, Oyama Island, yeah. And um, this guy came, uh, come back, and his uh, house destroyed. His uh, family died, so he started to live in capital in Junin, Tbilisi, where I grow uh, grow up. And this guy built uh, the the gym uh, dojo uh pretty much like nowhere he would coach the guys like in the, the lobby of the hotel the, the some circus uh, we would use for some days or some venues like big sport venues they had so we we would go in different gyms i remember even a tennis courts mm -hmm. tennis courts we would train and a lot of kids went there because there was a very popular time of karate in my country, mm -hmm. like Bruce Lee, Jet mm -hmm. Lee. Uh, we would rent the video videotapes like VHS and we would just watch the, <laughs> the I want to do this, I want to do this. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. We learned from that. Nunchucks uh -huh. were, was were my favorite toy. Uh -huh. yeah. And um, uh, he had a lot of students, was the first for, for the beginning, the classes were free, anyone can join. And at the same time, this guy was, um, uh, would live the very uh, kind of, he was not priest, but he was one of the part of the church. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was kind of requirement for us to be every Saturday and Sunday morning in a church. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> So every Saturday and Sunday, he would take us uh, in a church and uh, we would have everyday trainings. And every day was a tough training at the time, I remember. Because I can imagine, was, yeah. because Kyokushin, mm. yes. A lot of people don't know about Kyokushin. Kyokushin is the, the hardest, one of the yeah. hardest style in the world for the yeah. adult people. Can you imagine for a kid? Uh, yeah. It's hard to punch in the chest. Uh, kicks in short distance. I like to say that Giga is one of the best kickers that you have. You know, one of the best kickbox and I have a pleasure to work in my life. I like to say this all the time. Thank it you. To be honest, when you talk about martial arts, your life and your spirit, your spiritual side always walks together. Till now. For example, we have a tough situations in our life, then we have to have faith, but at the same time we have to work we have to know how to work our faith. So in bad moments in my life, 
I have faith, but I have martial arts to support me, to give me the, the, the spiritual side that I was sometimes looking for. Um, I remember most of the times when you have fight, you like to do your kata, mm -hmm. you like to do your kata. Yeah, I never, for, I never forget when you say that yeah, all the time when I work my kata, good things happen. <laughs> what means be spiritual? What, what for you, what means? Yeah, the kata, about kata, we have even a funny story. Uh, when I, as it's how I, uh, when I got uh, in UFC that day before morning, I came here and uh, was doing kata and uh, Ricardo, the style coach, mm -hmm. uh, came and he saw me, oh, you're doing katas. And yeah, I was like, uh, with me and him, we sometimes do katas by ourselves. And uh, I told him that when I do katas, I don't know, they sometimes like mostly some good things happens, you know? And after one hour I called him, hey man, I got into USC. <laughs> yeah. you, and, uh, and then you call me and say, man, we signed. So for most of people, um, it's not really nice to see you guys inside the octagon. It's really nice to see you guys. You guys fly. You're, you're kind of the guy, I, your nickname inside the gym is Ninja. Because you do things that nobody can do. Just, this is Giga's thing. Uh, it's really important for us when we talk about martial arts and uh, the history they have behind of that. You came as a striker to the United States. You brought your wife. Uh, you, since the day one, you, since you stepped inside King's May for me, was the, was the light coming. Was a, I saw a kid with the techniques above the roof. Your techniques is above the roof, as everybody know. But the, your heart, Giga. Ah. We came from zero because you started your career. You came as a UF, um, kickbox world champ, karate world champ. But the sport in, the <laughs> in your dreams, okay, I'm going to start doing that. You was, you was a white belt. I know, yeah. It's and now you are here. Talk about 6-0 <laughs> in UFC. 6-0 in UFC. In my case, uh, this was not easy for sure. Because uh, when I came here, as I, uh, you mentioned, Master, I had um, a lot of different titles from different sports. And in the kickboxing, I was feeling like the shark in the ocean. You know, I really enjoyed every single second in the ring, in the um, uh, mats to train and spar and fight. And uh, I had, you know, the kickboxers, they have this uh, little... Um, ego type of uh -huh, the feeling, uh -huh, you know, and uh -huh. I was one of them too, <laughs> <laughs> especially, especially I did a little bit of practice uh, with MMA guys in Netherlands and like, why not? I, I, I did a couple of sparring with them and I submitted guys, I did armbar. I never knew really these uh -huh. things, but I, I saw from my dad, you know, from judo a little bit. Mm -hmm. He showed me a couple of moves, and um, when I saw that was working with these European MMA fighters at the moment, nobody really knew. No, not nobody, but many people didn't know about Jiu Jitsu, mm -hmm. you know. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go there. And I watch uh, from kickboxers' eyes the MMA fighter striking. It looks different because mm -hmm. uh, some time, technique, whatever they you learn in kickboxing or karate in traditional ways, it's not done in MMA. And um, it kind of looks a little bit uglier. Mm -hmm. But it's different sport and you forget about it. You don't, re don't realize. Let's say I, I've been in many different gym in boxing and kickboxing and all the different coaches from boxers, like, you know, the high level boxing mm -hmm. coaches, mm -hmm. I mean, they tell me one thing about the hook, the other one shows me hook with different way and mm -hmm. says that this hook is shit. Mm -hmm. All I can say, every time you can hit somebody and he, he can have a damage, that's a right punch and right that's kick, right. you know? That's important when you say about the techniques. But sometimes when they learn about, uh, for example, I like to say martial arts is one thing, mixed martial arts is different thing. Completely. Your vision was a martial arts vision, 
look and like a guy, then I work thousand and thousand repeat movements. You repeat thousand, thousand, thousand movements to be a clear shot. A lot of people start training mixed martial arts and then they skip the step. They go straight for the kick. Okay, I'm gonna do this kick because this, this kick gonna work. Yeah, how many times you work this kick? I did 10, 15 mm -hmm. times work for me. But you don't know the founda foundation. Foundation sometimes start not just knowing how to throw punch the kick, but inside the head. There's a difference between coach, professors, masters, instructors. We, we have a different levels there. It's really important for us, Giga. And I always say that we came from martial arts, respect, discipline. You came from a country then, you know, then show a lot of heart inside the octagon. The guys in UFC now after you, UFC hiring a lot of guys from Georgia. You open the the market from Georgia inside UFC, and uh, which means for me, as a, I'm very proud to say that. The kid then came here with desire, became today one of the best fighters in the world. And we have two shots probably to fight for the belt. Can you see that? Hmm. That big picture was the same picture when we traveled, just me and you inside my car mm -hmm. to fight small shows. That kind of conversation that we have now, we have a couple of years <laughs> ago. Yeah, I remember. Why? Because the world has a power. And uh, one thing I can also, I want to mention that the, um, the part where I come from, and I believe this part, these type of parts are in everywhere in the world. Uh, the world has a big power, but also has a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's, I feel like that's how the world can make the, can to have a power. You know, if you have uh, this feeling to, about uh, responsibility, whatever you say to prove it or do it, uh, then that word has a power. You always put the flag. I remember when you fought the, the glory kickboxing, yeah. the tournaments all over the place, New York, we fought all over the place here. Jiu-Jitsu tournament. Jiu-Jitsu tournament, because the beginning was not our mission, because you put your name in the high, one of the best kickboxers in the world, Okay, but it was not that moment what it was, was we looking for. Okay, you're already the guy inside kickboxing, karate community. You put the karate inside the, 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 the martial arts as well. Um, so inside the mixed martial arts as well. You put your gi in tournaments, kickbox mm -hmm. tournaments, to show the respect of martial arts. It's not to prove our, we don't have to say things. You don't have to uh, try sell fights with, uh, trash talking no 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 but when we say something we're gonna do we never say nothing but as soon as you open your mouth you're gonna have to do that thing mm -hmm. yeah whatever you say you have to prove it and uh, this what's learned in martial arts the martial arts the way I learned that was the one of the main thing and also the lifestyle whatever I grew up that was kind of yeah, if you say the words in, in Georgia, um, that time kind of uh, we had um, street wa streets were a little bit like they were having a hard time, rough time because uh, we came out from Soviet Union and it needed some time to establish everything. And there is a lot uh, different type of understanding, you know, when some fight happens in a in the streets, this is not like, okay, we fight, we shake hands and that's it. No, it doesn't work like that with them. It's actually completely different. They first talk. Mm -hmm. They talk mm -hmm. and talk and talk and it goes mm, hours. It can be the days, you know. Now we're going to fight. <laughs> yeah, and whenever the fight time <laughs> comes and then, then it's completely different. But uh, first it's about the talk, about the answers and whatever you say you have to explain mm -hmm. you know and uh, that's how i grow up mm -hmm. i was just a regular <laughs> Tbilisi kid from the georgia and uh, that's where i learned a lot you know martial arts and uh, the obligation or responsibility of the world um, i agree with you Giga, and then seeing the, the the map you put georgia on the map there but before you guys are you guys compete. You guys have 
karate tournaments, you guys have kickbox tournament. And back in the days, you have a huge representativity inside the Georgia. You know, oh, you was just a young kid. And people look at you like a big star, the next big star in martial arts. How you see that? I just couldn't imagine. Every time I visualized my dream before, when I was like five, six, eight, ten, fifteen, 15, or 20, or 35, I had this time where I am right now and what I'm doing and what I will do still. I don't think this is the, the, the last moment. I know I'm having one of the prime time right now because of my age. I'm 32 years old and I know that athletes this time in this sport has one of the best times. Mm -hmm. But when I was a little kid in, a, in the age of six, uh, when I closed my eyes, I was visualizing and I was having the dreams all the time that I was standing in the middle of the venue and uh, around me like the thousands of people were there. and. Uh, that's what I felt happy and that was all my dream. That the moment when I started with karate, karate did not pay anything that moment, you know, and it was really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, right now they just started a new organization with karate that they are paying the money, but before either you had to become the coach and have a team and run the dojo or otherwise you would not be able to live and provide your family. So. I always were thinking about this because, as you know, Master, I had uh, the girlfriend from the young age too, and I this wanted is awesome. to <laughs> the only one. Yeah, this the is one awesome and either. only, and uh, I wanted to provide my family with my sport, with my job. I didn't want it, anybody to work for me to live, which I'm blessed because uh, I found the right one, for <laughs> and uh, my family and um, my wife. Uh, help me with this f for sure but uh, every single time I talked to them and we had the hard times too you know because the karate went didn't pay and I was uh, practicing and fighting inside the karate till the age of 18 19 uh, but same time I was fighting kickboxing and that moment uh, uh, was very popular K1 and I was thinking that closest sport that moment was uh, kickboxing so I could do a little bit of boxing and do my transition to kickboxing so I can I could fight in K1 represent my country and get paid from there so I can provide my family too but unfortunately I mean th th that was the reason why I moved uh, in Netherlands and unfortunately the beginning of 2010 uh, 2011 K1 crashed and organization yeah one of the best organization of world and uh, we saw a lot of heroes there no? a lot of heroes and uh, then after became a lot of drama because this organization didn't pay money to many many uh, that heroes mm -hmm. so once i smelled this i was still in uh, amsterdam in the netherlands and then i tried to start thinking uh what would be the closest and I had to choose either boxing and, or MMA and they invite you to compete you remember the yeah, one they invite you. what yeah. is the school in, the, in Chicago what is so first when I came here and when Chicago. we met uh -huh. the my visa was from boxing guys For boxing, they I made uh, mm -hmm. in Philadelphia mm -hmm. they, Philadelphia yeah. Philadelphia mm -hmm. they invited me for the camp for uh, Bernard Hopkins uh, <laughs> the legendary fighter mm -hmm. And uh, Nazim Richardson was the boxing coach. Unfortunately, he died last year. Um, and then I had to, I stayed there, was amazing. I met a couple of uh, great fighters like Danny Garcia and some of the best right now, the, some of the best boxers. And then, uh, I don't know, I, I had the feelings that I have to search up more. You know, I was here for the mission. When I left my family in Amsterdam and came here, I, w I came for six, seven weeks by myself, stayed in Philadelphia, stayed in New York and Washington. My last step was here. I was here actually in wild card. Definitely was the last <laughs> stop. <laughs> Completely, <laughs> Master, because the day I met you here was the day I had the flight in the night. So I came here and I was like, 
you know, maybe I don't go. I go. He, he may go, he I email go. me. He call me. He call Lulu, my <laughs> wife. It, you know, and my wife always say, "I have a kid from." He say he came from Amsterdam. He wants to come. I say, "Who is the kid?" Giga. I call him in Portuguese Gija. Gija. I say, "Gija, bring him. Bring him. Let's try. Let's try." And then he came. And then what happened when he came? <laughs> it's shadow boxing. It's gonna be just a shadow boxing. Remember? I guess who? <laughs> oh, actually, this. Was in the second time, uh, second time, second time. Yeah, this was second time, yeah. and then he came the second time in the gym and said, Okay, let's test this kid. Yeah. Let's see, Rafael dos Anjos, go with the Giga. <laughs> and then after them, he's still here Hell seven yeah. years. So it's not just show up and show your techniques, come, don't just come to the gym, show your techniques because beautiful kicks, beautiful punches, great grab, as you can see all the time. But who came? Could handle the train. Who came in, put their heart there, to put people in bad situation, training. Maybe this kid is a full package. <laughs> Spoke very well, has no fear against anyone. He came skinny, but throw punches and kicks like a heavyweight. And after I see you knock everybody out, say, Maybe this kid <laughs> maybe has some future over here. <laughs> and today we talk about six years inside. UFC. So everything that you have done in your career, for sure, is for that moment. Every support that you have in your country, every support that you have for your mom, for your father, I think was worth. You know, every each step that you did in your career worth. You came, you came, you went to spend some time in Philadelphia, but was was not that. Yeah, and then another place was not that. And then here, you it, this we talk when you talk about connection. If you don't have the kind of connection, it's really hard to work with. Um, martial arts, mixed martial arts. People think I'm going to the King's MMA. I want to pay Rafael to train. That's it. It's not work like that. We have to have connection. And I never forget. You came to me and say, Master, one day you're gonna have a great connection. Trust me. I say, no, we we'll have a ready. I say, no, you have a ready. No, no, no. <laughs> trust me, when I have a great connect, Giga, we we'll have a ready. I already have it. No, no, trust me. <laughs> yeah, the world has power, you know? And uh, I, the way we work together, Giga, inspire a lot of people inside the gym. The way you inspire the people, you inspire people to be a better fighter, be a better person. Don't, we don't have to have fears, you know? But if you have some fear, let's face the fear. It's, it's not simple. We spoke with Marvin a couple of days ago when he moved to Italy to train with us. It's not simple change everything for one dream because in your case, you put your wife to live your dream. You know, sometimes for sure it can be her dream, but uh, our dream goes first. And this the step that you take is a lot of responsibility. Yeah, yeah. It was, and I didn't like the, for the beginning, I when I moved to Holland, I didn't know who I w what I was doing. She was with me. She was there. She was with me. She got pregnant there, and we had a baby on the way. We didn't know, okay, damn, what I'm going to do. And they were paying me like the 200 euros, 150 euros for the fights. And for the beginning, nothing. Like the first few fights, I got paid nothing. Then started first money, 250 euros. Then back under 150. So but at the same time, Google, you have good life in Georgia. People understand you have yeah. no reason to mm. move from Georgia. You have big name. People was looking at you as a big star inside martial arts. So was on TV all the time, mm -hmm. a lot of shows. Oh, this is Giga Shikatsu. You know, people yeah, knew. But, but you, you move from the comfort to, zone. I you didn't want it to live with uh, somebody's uh, help. Like, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, in my country, it happens a lot that in, in the many many years they live when uh, if your parents like the father has some job or like the company and they get paid from that oh i'm gonna use my dad and i don't know maybe that was a challenge of me against <laughs> my dad i don't know it was kind of something <laughs> that i you know i wanted to have a family in the young age i wanted to have a kids uh, from the young age and i wanted to be the uh, the man of the family and not like the kid of the family, you know, like, so, yeah. And when I came, 
uh, was in uh, Holland, like I was doing the first steps and I didn't know later when my wife was telling me this, what's going to happen in the one, next month. It's like, baby, I don't know. <laughs> we'll, live day we'll, by day. We'll see. And day you know, by the, day. Yeah, and the, uh, also the, uh, I, and I understand today, let's say, the, if somebody would ask her, the parent, right, hey, what's your husband doing? And he's like 19, 20 year old, right? She would like, we're good. <laughs> the <laughs> okay. answer, we're good. Don't worry, <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> like there was no answer. We just followed the road. Even here, you know, we came and um, the, the that was the huge. I have to ex uh, mention too. You know, I was the, the uh, having a great period, a great time and moment in kickboxing here, uh, kickboxing uh, career, but. Um, my the one of the first coach I mentioned uh, the core hammers. I left this guy after two years. There was some issues, me and him, and some drama. The Dutch people love this drama. I love this guy <laughs> and everybody I worked before, but they love a lot of drama, man. I can't handle this. You know, I'm different. I'm straight guy. And um, after two years, there was some rumors, and I left. I left the gym and moved to Mike's gym, and. Um, this guy kind of did not really, uh, this guy was the matchmaker became of the glory. And when K1 died, they never really gave me the opportunity to fight for glory. They never opened the door for me because at the moment I was in Mike's gym. Then from Mike's gym, I went to Voss gym, another drama at Mike's. <laughs> and uh, when I was facing him at the matchmaking process, he never gave me the contract. And then I was here. It's a it's a good story too, and uh, it was so. First in 2014, me, you, Benny, Rafa, Dos Anjos, uh, Ali, we are in Phoenix in Arizona, and somebody messaged you and mm -hmm. tell you that, hey, we're planning next year the show for the glory and uh, what's your fighters and this and this mm -hmm. and you told me this, Giga, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put you next year in glory, and I was like, yeah. Uh, what about MMA? Should I do glory? Keep boxing <laughs> back again? I was like, yeah, I always wanted to fight uh -huh. glory since K1 died. And okay, and um, you sent a couple of names and they didn't reply for the first, I remember. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved for the beginning of, of the next year, they contacted you and this happened. <laughs> this happened because in San Diego they needed a fighter mm -hmm. for 155 at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm, they did not found uh, the guy, and I was there with my hands <laughs> <Just> <laughs> raised. <laughs> and we got it, we got it, and I feel like this was a big uh, entering was my career in the United know why. States. You have opportunities to say, no, I don't want to fight, I don't want to fight. But uh, you take opportunities from there, because to live our dream, we have to move sometimes, step on rocks. In Portuguese, so we step in over a lot of rocks to become UFC. So fighter, you fall, you have seen, you fall, Jiu Jitsu tournaments as a white belt, you fall, kickbox inside the best kickboxing show in the world, glory kickbox, small shows because this is a different sport. So you have to train, you have to compete in MMA, small shows mm -hmm. to get I confidence. Have to pay my money you too. have to pay to yeah, fight. Yeah. <laughs> in the end of the day, we have a call and they say it's time to go, it's time mm -hmm. to fly. But uh, before, we have to work a lot of things. It's a different sport. It was simple, really simple. It's simple for me to put you inside UFC as one of the best strikers in the world. But you have to be prepared for everything there because as soon as you step inside UFC, we have no more time to fix little things. Mm -hmm. We spend three, four years work hard before UFC. Before yeah. UFC was yeah. five years, four, yeah, four years. Because yeah, because the beginning years. was, we put focus on the kickbox because mm -hmm. we compete a lot of kickbox, but now it's gonna be around six, almost seven years mm -hmm. of work hard for this moment. Yeah. And then we sign, mm -hmm. and then you are here today. Then we're here today, <laughs> yeah. It was a long road, especially the, my MMA career started with a losing fight. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there was a lot of things before too, but the result was a losing zero and one so the, pff, it was 
not really a good start and uh, we have to do the everything what uh, we had to do i mean rebuild. I, I listen to you That's i listen rebuild. to ali i listen to every coach and uh, fighters i talk to benny every single day mm -hmm. brother what i have to do <laughs> what i gotta do i'll do <laughs> your young brother yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny i can call him a young brother probably he has a yeah, I you don't know. know. <laughs> More white hair than me. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> How many black hair here? <laughs> and then he's going to come, okay, I'm 7 I'm seven zero. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah he's going to say that because Ben now is a big head, you know. But just between us, he's a little yeah. big head, you know. <laughs> What's the right decision, Giga? Uh, when Giga was a kid, who was the guy that you look up? Like, uh, I want to be like this guy one day. The guys who I really look up to it. When I was young, was Mike, uh, nah. your guy Tyson, <laughs> my guy, our guy, our guy. Yeah, <laughs> and we would wake up like 5 a.m. in Georgia, 6 a.m. Me, and my dad, all the neighborhoods, because uh, only one guy had some Russian stolen TV code. <laughs> That's how we were getting them. I don't know what he was doing. Like, <laughs> and we were watching his fights. Uh, I was really look into the Bruce Lee movies and Jet Li. These two guys were, were also one of my favorites. We would I would have all the collection of the movies and train, watch the, their fight scenes every single day, probably. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and that's how I want, uh, how my name want, uh, how I wanted my name to be sounded in the future. Awesome. I am. Um, I'm having my way, and we're not the, there uh -huh. yet, but we're going. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, one thing that you you have used very well during your career, more than your legs and your arms, is work for people that have uh, cancer, and I love to talk about that because this is a different level of conversation. Um, we have to show them how strong. They are, not us. If you think about Luther fighters, oh, fighters are strong dudes, strong men, no, no. People that have past problems. My mom, my mom had two cancers. My mom had two cancers. And I always use my platform to talk about that. And uh, it's important that people will know uh, the work that you have done inside the, your work and uh, how it works. I don't love to talk much about uh, my charity thing, mm -hmm. usually like, um, because it's kind of, yeah, it was uh, started from a lot of pain because mm -hmm. my mom died from cancer. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is going to be in me forever. And uh, whatever I do, I believe I still have my mom and I'm doing this in my mom's love. Amen. Whatever I do, mm -hmm. uh, it's not big, it's not huge uh, as people think that I can help for like everyone in the world. Of Yet, course. but uh, you help it's a lot. It's my dream it. for sure, it's my dream because um, every single time I do anything for this charity and from the charity we help someone, this kind of gives me the so much power master. Like it's awesome. Yeah. The first time when I did that was in 2014 um, and we helped like uh, close to 25 people, 20 people, uh, mostly women, they were women. Mm -hmm. and. Um, then I was in here. Uh, I was here in November and October for Dos Anos when he fought in mm -hmm. that period. And when I went back in Georgia for New Year's and Christmas, these ladies, I didn't knew, they made a, a meeting. For, uh, they wanted to meet me very much uh, because it was a couple of months um, earlier. I collected money and um, sent them to provide their medicine and uh, some your sister help you there no? yeah my <coughs> sister my family lots mm -hmm. of friends also mm -hmm. it's it's not just me and my sister a lot of people, people are around, uh, behind of this and uh they made this meeting and master i never you uh, probably you never seen me is crying and or tear like mm -hmm. i never do this i mean it's not a shame but i just don't cannot you know they were raised mm -hmm. and uh, they m met me in some small, cozy, little uh, uh, 
not a venue, I don't know, some some room and they were telling me how thankful they were and this and that and they told me the words that made me <coughs> made me come to tears and made me cry. They said uh, um, you lost your mom but you have twenty moms here. Amen. And, you know, and you never lost your mom. And like that was kinda of meaning and when they when I had to say any word, I could not, I, mm -hmm. I didn't say anything. I, I could not say anything. So, um, and this energy is what's uh, always with me. And uh, whatever they are going through, it's like, I have a lot of fans who had the cancer and they text me mm -hmm. every day. They awesome, send huh? me a lot of messages, a lot of love messages. And uh, they feel love. And they tell me how warrior I am, how how what a nice fighter I am. In reality, I'm nothing. I'm doing my job. I'm living, uh, following my dream to become a UFC first champion and do the things. These these people are the biggest warriors, and this is what I try to tell them too. And uh, all I can say to them, the message is like, the, whatever they are doing. It's it, this is real war, and um, anything I can help and do, like uh, it's always my. The, I become very happy that I can do a little piece to pro improve this for them. Like you, are, you already did, because you and Benny probably this year UFC will give you guys a war. You guys are gonna run for men's of the year. For this is awesome UFC. Uh, they step forward. They step forward with the idea, and uh, I appreciate that to show that we have to use the light that we have to help people, to show them love. People, it's not about money. Giving them money, no, no. We have to show love. Money, simple. Money, one day gonna done. Money goes. We respect love. Uh, one hug. If you give one hug. Mm -hmm. A lot of people put uh, signs, I never seen in Brazil, a free, free hug. I saw a lot of things in the United States, and never seen in Brazil, people put a sign, say free hug, which means a lot of people need that. Yeah. If you are there too, to, okay, I have a, what I can give to you, I can give just my hug. Yeah. It's enough for a lot of things, sometimes better than 10,000, 50,000, 000, give me a hug. And this is what we believe. Uh, you use very well the platform that you have inside UFC to promote good things all over the world. More than punches and kick. And this MMA can give to you. This is a martial arts gave to you. The light gave to you. Everything that I learned live, I put them in a place, then I was ready to be who I am today. My mom, you know, I was raised by mom and grandma, just my mom and my grandma. And uh, I have everything in my life. I never see uh, poor things. I came from a humble family in Brazil because my mom always showed that she was stronger than every a diversity that we have in our life. And if we're going to have a diversity in our life, 100%. It's not, never, it's not <laughs> every day is going to be a sunny day. Mm -hmm. But the, our foundation that we learn inside in our house is going to keep with us for the rest of our life. I believe what you learn from your mom, from your dad, you still learn from Zaza. <laughs> you're gonna steal to the end of your life. And uh, when, do, when do you finish that, I'm gonna keep it with your sons. And then this is the legacy. My legacy inside the Kings MMA is, uh, I want more than fighters over here. I want real people. I want to work with real people. With, problem, with problems, with uh, people that have to be a better person every single day. Uh, this kind of people then we want to work because if you want to step inside the gym when people then you can trust they say they have the same problem that I have the connection start there I believe for the future Giga the way we work now we're going to show the world the real power <laughs> people think <laughs> people think that Giga's kick is the kick <laughs> no 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 <laughs> your kick is strong but the real power is still to come yeah, it's a, it's a road, and uh, I'm on the road, and uh, I'm mean, really enjoying uh, this moment right now because um, 
It was not in a day, it was coming for a long time. Yeah, 32 years old I am right now. Well, so I started since the four. It's like 28 years old. And I love um, it. Yeah. Long time in a row. A veteran. <laughs> a kid veteran. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's coming. It's nothing yet. You okay, you, what, do you, what do you expect in the UFC? What is, what is our biggest dream? After 6 0, so as everybody knows, it's really hard to have victories inside the UFC, for sure it is. But 6 0, <laughs> <laughs> you already broke some records inside your division. What are we looking for? The mainly, I just want to shut every par everybody's mouth who was talking <laughs> shit to me. <laughs> that, that's the main thing. It's also. the mission. <laughs> <laughs> it's the mission. I want, uh, and I see this every day happening, Master. You know, like every single time I fight and I win and come back, uh, I see the people who are talking shit, they are posting the pictures of me, the sharing the videos and saying the, how proud they are. It's kind of good to see this progress. But my dream, my dream is... Uh, uh, to become a champion first from Georgia. Uh, I'm not going to be mad if I will be second or third <laughs> or fifth. That's <laughs> matter. Don't care. Like, the yeah. belt is yours. Yeah, yeah I just want to be the champion from you, uh, from Georgia. And uh, then uh, I got some other dreams too. So the first yeah, thing man. first and then we, we're going to make the uh, everything this bigger and bigger. But I know I have to put uh, more hard work, you know, and this is no new for me, and it's not news for me. I know everything needs the hard work, and um, you have it's going to be the you have them. the fun, fun, fun time, I believe. Yeah, people, uh, the California dream, the California <laughs> dream is that hard work every single day. <laughs> this is simple. California dream is really simple to live. We have to how many work how many hard every came, single day. How many friends came from Georgia uh, here and uh, visited since uh, like six, six years or seven? Uh, and they saw the, man, you drive this way every single day? What? <laughs> <laughs> Just to drive? And uh, I went back in Georgia on Christmas, New Year's when I spent, and when I drive it's just like three four minutes drive everywhere like two three minutes four minutes and it's like very short distances uh -huh, uh -huh. you know and uh, now i was like wow so good everything's so close when i came back i realized this like for them it's kind of uh if i see the distances where we just go here I remember you were doing mm -hmm. that classes in Hollywood mm -hmm. and coming back from there every single day and One helping hour, the training to for go, me. Two and hours. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, all this and for them it's just like, like they no, nah, thank you, <laughs> thank you. This is the b just this is the beginning of the hard work, and uh, I don't Strong. even mentioning whatever we are doing. Like just uh, this long <laughs> drives for them it's kind of twelve months. Yeah. Oh, man. Every single day. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up. Giga. For the future, we gonna put Georgia on the map as the first Georgian UFC <laughs> champ. This is what we're gonna plan. We're gonna work hard for this moment. We're gonna work hard every single day. When you move your life, you move for good things. I believe you did the right thing move to United States. Look for a good place to train. Look for you know, you have good guys in Georgia, you have good guys in for sure, and I'm still done. Great kickboxer, but the decision that you have changed your life, changed a lot of lives as well. You have your California kid, Max, born here. <laughs> <laughs> your son born here. Now you have a rule, United States. And in the future, when the people think and say something about Giga Shikatsi, what do you think they're gonna say about you? Uh, you mean uh, from Hopefully they don't talk shit. <laughs> 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 from Georgia or from United States? From like United States. Mm. Because you did everything then you could inside the martial arts. Now, after years, you became a new athlete inside a new sport, become one of the best in the world. And I want to be an example for the, all those athletes. Uh, 
and young kids that everything is possible to uh, when 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 That's it. when they think about some dream to reach uh when they think about uh, something to make this happen and they have doubts and they are young and they say oh can i do it can i do it and when they hear my case and hear my the story i want uh, them to uh, have my life experience uh, life history like an experience and say that yeah if giga can do it and uh, he'll work so hard yeah, i can do it too this is what i really want them to think what about. is your plan to fight when you when you want to fight again uh what time is now <laughs> <laughs> it's giga style <laughs> yeah i really want to fight soon um i want i know that UFC is working for some big things for me and uh, I'm super excited to come back in Octagon and uh, fight for him again. Um, we have to say Sean Shaw and Mick Miner, <laughs> Dana, they, they support you a lot. Uh, yeah. I have to say I'm UFC, very, very have thankful all of those guys you mentioned, Master. Give uh, you a lot of attention, give you a lot of media. Because I remember about your things. I had the chance in Contender Series and I, l I missed it, unfortunately. And then I learned a lot and then uh, these guys gave me a, a one more chance and this uh, really means a lot to me. Every single time I saw the Sean and all those guys, I mentioned this bef many times. That that was my uh, life-changing uh, opportunity and very yes, thankful so. for that. And yeah, for Ali as well. Ali... We have to say oh, Ali, For our sure. crazy Ali, <laughs> he worked hard. Yeah, yes. yeah he was ended. the first guy who signed me here. He gave me the contract from World Series of Fighting without yeah, no MMA true, experience. True. It was huge yeah. to me. You know. Worker visa. Yeah, now work, work visa. And since the day one, he's been he's been managing me. And of course, I'm very thankful of him too. I don't believe in coincidence. <laughs> I don't believe in coincidence. Like, well, I believe that... Uh, in bless yeah this is different between coincidence and bless i believe you are blessed i remember when i you spar know? him <laughs> well, <Ali? Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> i don't like to talk about <laughs> that but uh let's talk Giga. what happened uh, when you sparring with Ali? please let me know this is og talk we have to talk what you did with ali so the <laughs> very 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 first time very very first time you know yeah, people don't know bali he's a fighter he's a former he fighter was a, uh, judo yeah. athlete and uh -huh. an mma fighter so uh, he fought in japan i never still fought i was karate yeah. boxer yeah. and i still never fought in japan <laughs> this guy has <laughs> fight in japan so that's that was the time when i met first time the 2014 we were in arizona and Ben introduced me to Ali that, hey, and you were the around there. And um, we go to Ali and Ben is really pushing to me that this is a guy you, can, you need to work. This is the best. This is the best. At the moment, I was not really knew the, the journalists, the managers of the MMA. I was not uh, following so into, mm -hmm. too much because I had kickboxing career at the same moment, you know. And... Um, when I met him, like, okay, this is gonna be my future manager. I'm thinking in my mind and like shake hands and we're showing him my fight highlight highlights and this and that. So I'm this champion, that champion. <laughs> this guy's like watching me like this. Mm. Just one more than we're in hotel. <laughs> and, and he's like, You wanna come downstairs? I say, for what? You wanna spar? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah, sure. With who? I was like, with me. Me and you, we spar. Oh, like, uh, hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's the problem? Like, with somebody asking you, they come downstairs and yeah, spar. Why? <laughs> this, this, this is uh, completely like the street shit. You know, like this is not not like professional way when you do some business. Uh, looks well, like okay. we're doing MMA, you know, it's different. So uh, I said, all right, we'll, uh, we'll go down. Maybe this is the way the guys work in MMA. Yeah, you have to spar yeah, with the know. manager yeah. to get my did, contract. Ben, okay. Benny, if Benny gives me thumbs up, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> but what Benny does, go down. So, all right. And we went down, and, and this guy put the gloves, and 
I don't know. I, I'm trying to be nice guy. <laughs> I don't know. Like the, I don't want to show him my the other face. You know, I'm half here nice, half the different. I need to sign my contract. <laughs> why, Ali, why? <laughs> and um, we started sparring, and uh, this guy came crazy. He tried to take my head off with hooks and with uh, what he super was doing. Superman, super man, punches, super man punches. jumps and stuff. And I'm watching Benny, brother. <laughs> <laughs> what I should do? <laughs> And uh, the one thing I can say was this guy cannot spar. Yeah. <laughs> he can't yeah. fight. He can't he, fight. Sparring, no. yeah, like the touch, touch, uh -huh, the no. friendly. He no, he uh, comes to fight. Let's fight. fight. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, I was a day kind of gentle. Uh, and the rest <laughs> of there, I'm going to leave it here because <laughs> <laughs> whatever happens, Ali can finish this story <laughs> next time you have him here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super happy to, yeah. for example, uh, things when the things has to be, has to be. For example, Ali, he put in the, in the face of the show. For sure, your work help a lot as well, but if you don't have a representativity inside, you have to have some powerful guy to help you. He helped you in a lot of situations. Then we don't have to mention yeah, now yeah. what he did for, not just for, for a lot of fighters here in the we play, we joke because family can do. Nobody can play with Ali, just us. For Somebody sure. will play, it's gonna be a war. <laughs> oh yeah, Ali is a man, and uh, he gave me so many good, uh, good opinions what to do, how nice. to do. Because I'm an emotional guy, like uh, I, f I feel, and I think every single MMA fighter, they have some emotional different visions and that's why I'm too and uh, we always need somebody who can who's mature he he who can calm, down. calm you down and tell you whatever you need at the moment mm -hmm. and you do this part in my life and Ali do this part a lot so yeah you, if he you know I, I had experience with the glory kickboxing mm -hmm. I was doing my thing mm -hmm. and you remember how I made Honest. how emotional how mm -hmm. things were ups and downs and uh, i never had the one single experience in ufc like that and all this is doing ali and um, yeah your hard work he knows what he's doing yeah, yeah. and uh, your last fight you beat cub swasson one of the best guys in the world veteran and it beat a lot of guys and um uh, you went down and did the right the clean fight was the perfect fight. It was the dream fight, to, if you think about. What changed after that fight? Around me, a lot of things changed. For me, in my, my vision, in mind, and mentality, nothing's changed. Uh, I still love the Cub because I loved this guy for a long time. Like I watched his fights for a long, long time. Every single time I watched, the guy gave me some goosebumps. And I was like, I was for him. I was cheering all the time for him. Nice and guy as well. Yeah, nice very guy. nice guy, and um, just uh, he don't not following me back. That's uh, <laughs> 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 I made on this too. Um, and we knew each other before the fight too. And uh, I, for the beginning, when I wanted to take the fight, they, this kind of hold me for a couple of seconds. I was like, damn. But that's uh, we both took this as a business, and we went. Uh, after normal everything's cool uh, and f around me I see a lot of things changing you know people finally they recognize my face and my name mm -hmm. they see that oh that's a giga guy who can kick a heart mm -hmm. this is a kind of the moment that they recognized me more but and put myself uh, more forward position but other than that, master in my life, like as my thinking is, is just uh, one of the guy who we fought and we had to compete against him and win against him was a mission. One of the guy who tried to cross our road uh, and there will be the more and we're just gonna keep continue the same hard work. Yeah, I'm still there. Uh, just now it's kind of, you have a good microphone and they can hear more better <laughs> exactly, you know exactly exactly i am really like it because awesome. uh, every single time i i call out the people now they can hear mm -hmm. they still don't react mm -hmm. they just don't tell you react, can hear you know? me like, <laughs> the beginning when i asked couple of fights then nobody really like 
not even media rea reacted and who is this guy a couple of guys they answered me back said uh, like who are you or something like that and now they they at least they know my name i believe they knew that before too but they mm -hmm. for sure they know my name and um, uh, there is a reason why they are not reacting with me and i really enjoy this this is a and uh, in the end now of our program, mm -hmm. our talk, I want to see you talk. all the OG <laughs> talk. I want to see you send a message for people in Georgia and uh, ask them to come here and train with us. You know, let them know how how much I respect them and uh, the way they show their love. All the time they send messages mm -hmm. about you, but at the same time they talk. Thank you for take care about him. So let them know all my respect and uh, the word is yours. So Dan, Dan, Gargi, Saubari, Konda, Master Tan, Master Rafael Cordeiro, Tan, that when you are old, is here, King Sememeshi, it's a bit hard to believe. I mean, there are better members also to show you to our room. Two women's interest cake, but no right come on the Magas don't cargo don't is shame the Mepsolips, Mopes and Dit, may hold his health shake its hold. In my shirom, I get Master Tan, Tarmat twenty carrier, the Uke guy clued his Xebir as Megan Gauriare, Amslebis Madze, you have seen. Hey, now let's translate. Yeah, so pretty much like um, I told them in Georgian that uh, if when they gonna reach some levels and uh, they will be ready to come here and train and especially the fighters uh, i'll be the bridge mm -hmm. to make yeah. the, their contacts uh, i know the how many people are sending you the ma emails and messages from around the world and they want to come train but um, it's not um, everyone cannot do it. That's and, true. You know they have to have the face. I remember a couple of even Georgians mm -hmm. came, and you remember I told mm -hmm. you that mm -hmm. there are Georgians that I can represent, and there are the people that I cannot represent. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever I see the people that uh, they represent the real face of Georgia, I'm gonna introduce them to you, and um, I'm gonna leave it from there. Yeah, <laughs> let's see if they have. Oh, it's just there. <laughs> I, they, they, they do, they do for sure. <laughs> Guys, we have a pleasure today to have Giga Shikatsi, the guy that I love, the guy that I call for Ninja. Why? Because he's a young OG. He's a new generation of fighters. For sure, he's going to be the next UFC champ. Uh, I have a pleasure to work with this Oreo every single day. And uh, it's just the beginning of his career. And you can follow. It's the beginning, but yeah, you can follow his career from now. You see what he's going to do inside Kings MMA. This was the OG Talk Podcast. I'm Rafael Cordeiro, your host. And today we have our special guest, Giga Shikats. I look forward to see you guys on the next episode.